and my colleague Ying Bo will be presenting on the ArcGIS Pro and Desktop Masterclass. For our session today, we will be going through some of the ArcGIS Pro new capabilities and workflows such as the Public Transit Data Model, which is a new capability in the latest release, new workflows for the model builder, improved editing to the parcel fabric capability, and enhanced realism in the 3D visualization. The public transit data model allows the modeling of schedule-based public transit service using public transit data. The data in a network must include a specific set of tables and feature classes with a particular schema that defines the transit stops and lines, as well as the dates and times of where the transit service is available. These tables and feature classes can be used in a network data set as a time-based cost attribute configured using the public transit evaluator. The evaluator calculates the travel time along transit lines at a specific time of day based on the public transit schedule defined in a data model. The GTFS General Transit Fit Specification is used to create a valid set of public transit data model tables and feature class by running the appropriate geoprocessing tools. Your network data set can also be configured to include public transit stops, lines, and schedules from more than one transit agents transit agency in the same feature classes and tables. So some of the use cases, the public transit data model is actually a useful tool for planning purposes. The analysis will allow the planners to identify gaps in the existing transport system infrastructure, such as where are the areas that, can, that are not covered by any transport services, or specific timings during the day where there are a lack of available public trans transportation options for specific regions. This will allow planners to identify areas where they can improve on the accessibility by adding more transportation nodes or new routes. ArcGIS Model Builder is a visual programming aid to create geoprocessing models to map out and automate your GIS workflows. In this ArcGIS Pro update, you can now export the model created on ArcGIS Pro to Python directly. Geoprocessing tools ran on the geoprocessing canes are added to the project's geoprocessing history. The tools listed in the history can be added to a model by dragging and dropping them into an open model. The tool will also be able to pass through the inputs and outputs of all the existing and incoming elements and automatically operates, create connections to the, co to the correct elements according to the rules. Just like scripts, Models created on a model builder are encapsulated workflow, and once created, they can be used over and over again as a faster alternative as compared to manually performing all the individual steps. It can be used to automate any geoprocessing process, whether it's complex or simple and straightforward. It is a shortcut for getting lots of geoprocessing tasks done. This is especially useful for users with very specific and repetitive processes. This will therefore increase their work productivity and efficiency. And lastly, these models are built for reuse, which is a perfect way to explore and test what-if scenarios when you are able to change certain parameters and rerun the model for optimization. So now I'll hand over the mic to Ingpo to present um, on our first demo. Thank you, Cheryl. Hi. So in this first demo, we'll show some capabilities of the network analyst and the model builder. Public uh, transport agencies can share their network, their uh, transit data, such as uh, stops and routes, through a format known as GTFS, otherwise known as General Transit Feed Specification. After downloading a region's GTFS and using uh, desktop geoprocessing tools, you can create a network data set that uses public transit evaluators. Specifically, you'll be using tools such, such as the GTFS to network data set transit sources, as well as the connect network data set transit sources to streets tool. I'll run this model now. As this model will take roughly three to four minutes to complete, I'll just jump ahead to the end product. So over here, we have the uh, transit network represented by the gray lines. And we have the black dots, uh, which are the uh, transit stops. So with this network data set, with public transit data, uh, we can answer questions such as, how easy is it for the population to access important destinations using public transit? 
for example, I like to I like to answer the question: uh, How much of Singapore can access a hospital with, within thirty minutes of public transit? So to do that, I'll use the network analyst and the service area. So first I'll import the hospitals as a facility. Hospitals layer here. And then run. So these brown points represent the hospitals in Singapore. Next I'll change the direction to towards the facil facilities. Change the cutoff time to only 30 minutes. For the arrive depart time I'll use today and 10 a.m. and it looks fine and I'll run it. So, so the shaded brown area shows the coverage of Singapore that it will be covered within 30 minutes uh, of public transit to a hospital. I noticed there's a gap in the Woodlands area and I also know that there's a new hospital being built in the Woodlands area. I'd like to see how this new hospital will improve the coverage. So one way to do that would be to go to my history, click the three tools that I just ran, and add it to a model. With this, with this model, I'll make some adjustments to parameters give the service area a new name so it doesn't overwrite my current one. Change the direction again. Change the cutoff to 30 minutes. Change the time to today. Keep it at 10 a.m. And for, for the facilities, I'll use the new hospital layer that includes the Woodlands Hospital. Okay, add the result to my display. Looks okay, and run. So now we have the the new coverage, where the, the coverage has expanded a little due to the hospital and Woodlands. And that is the end of the first demo. I'll now pass it back to Cheryl to continue. Thank you, Ingbo. Parcel data is recorded on all legal records such as plans, deeds, and records of survey. Parcels are created and edited in response to changes to the legal record and other record-driven workflows. The parcel fabric provides a comprehensive framework for managing, editing, and sharing parcel data in ArcGIS Enterprise. In a single user environment, the parcel fabric can be edited and maintained in a file Joe database. In a multi-user environment, the parcel fabric can be edited and maintained using a service-based architecture created in an enterprise Joe database and is created, shared, and edited as a feature service. It allows you to share the parcel fabric across all platforms on desktop, mobile, and web. Currently, the parcel fabric is editable using ArcGIS Pro. Editing on web and mobile clients will be supported in future releases of ArcGIS Pro. Parcel fabric on ArcMap can now be imported and edited on ArcGIS Pro by upgrading of the parcel fabric data. You can build new parcel data or create missing parcel features from polygons and lines using feature data set. Different parcel types such as ownership parcels, administrative parcels, and subdivision parcels can be assigned to a parcel fabric. And to manage the data quality, different Joe database topology rules and parcel rules can be used to identify and fix errors. Lastly, by keeping the information of it par each parcel edits, this can help to maintain the accuracy of the parcel data. 
The parcel fabric capability is especially useful for record keeping purposes, for plans dates and records of surveys, which may be required for planners and developers for planning purposes. Having the ability to keep track of the edits allows planners to maintain a proper historical record for future references. In one of the latest updates of ArcGIS Pro, it has included many new tools with enhancement to the realism of 3D views. There are new 3D models, water symbolization, which simulates water of different wave directions and colors, and lighting effects, which increases the depth perce uh, perception by using shadows. The Pixel Editor is a new tool to interactively manipulate pixel values for raster and imagery data. It allows you to edit an individual pixel or groups of pixels. You will be able to reclassify your pixels, regions, or objects. Using the preset filters, you can also smooth out areas to improve the quality of your images. The editor also allows replacement of a region of image with occlusion with another region of pixels. And this can be useful for military operations where it may be necessary to obscure or redact confidential pixels for national security. The water field symbol tool is a tool that can be configured to simulate water of different colors, wave, directions, and magnitudes. The tool is able to simulate an Im animation of the wave motion of a body of water of configurable size. It is also able to show the reflection of objects on the water body. The profile view is a new 3D view ability that allows you to create a profile viewing state. You can now view your 3D data as a vertical stack where you can interactively add a profile line in the scene, and the view automatically shifts to display a vertical slice of the content, which provides a clearer representation of your data. The profile view is a temporary viewing state and is useful when you want to see your content from a site-on viewpoint. The view adjusts to clip and focus on the content only in the profile construct area. The scene view is able to toggle between the default perspective drawing mode to parallel drawing mode to preserve relative proportions of any objects. The navigation experience also switches to a planar navigation so you can pan across a scene rather than through it. You can apply other actions and interact with the available tools such as selection, measure, and pop-up identification while in a profile viewing state. The multi-patch editing tool includes tools like the Slice Multi-Patch, Explode, and Merge. The Slice Multi-Patch tool splits up the multi-patch features at a specific location using a horizontal or vertical cutting plane, which can allow you to see the interior on a vertical or horizontal plane. The Explode tool separates the multi-patch features into its individual 3D tools, uh, 3D faces to allow edits. While editing the individual features, you can then merge it back. This, ma ed this makes editing on individual 3D multi-patch much simpler and faster. So the merge function will then combine all these individual multi-patch features or faces that were separated previously back into a single multi-patch feature. So uh, now I'll hand it over to Ingbo to show you some of our new 3D capabilities. Hi, thank you, Cheryl. Hi, so in this second demo, I'll showcase some uh, multi-patch editing as well as some raster editing capabilities in ArcGIS Pro. So let's say, for example, I, I'm in charge of renovating the flower dome in Gardens by the Bay. And the first thing I'd like to try is to expand, uh, expand the waterfront. So one way to preview this is to use the pixel editor. Use replace. Draw the area I'd like to crop out. And replace it with the sea. So now I've expanded waterfront. Next, I'd like to renovate the flower dome itself. Since the land area ar around is quite limited, I'll have to expand it vertically. One way to simulate this would be to use the multi-patch uh, multi slice tool. Over here, multi-patch, slice multi-patch. Click the multi-patch, I like the slice. Initiate the pane, and then slice. Uh, 
I'll add the extension I pre previously prepared to just give me an idea of what it looked like. So while I'm relatively happy with this output, I'm, I think the background is a little bit boring. So one way to make it more lively would be to use the animated water symbology. So to do that, first I have my 2D water body polygon. I'll extrude it, uh, extrude it a little to make it 3D, as animated water only works on a 3D, 3D layer. So I'll extrude it. Change the symbology properties to animated fill. Give the wave some direction. Change the strength to moderate. And that's animated water. So also please note that y you can see the building being reflected in the water. Okay. And that's the end of the second demo. I'll, non I'll now m move on to the uh, rest of the presentation slides. So here are the links that I use to get the data for the demos. The last thing at the bottom is the workflow I followed to create the network data set with pu public transit data. I'll wait a moment while you guys take a photo. Okay, I think everyone's got it. Okay. Here are the d uh, dates for the training courses that are relevant to to this uh, presentation. Please note that for the dates in September and October, you can get a 20% discount if you present your S3 user conference ticket. So if you're interested, please keep your uh, conference ticket beyond today. And finally, we have the roadmap for ArcGIS Pro. Oh, sorry, my bad. Training dates. All right, uh, finally, we have the, uh, the roadmap for ArcGIS Pro. Uh, d d please note that these capabilities are tentative and subject to change. With that said, uh, in the near term, which is the next release or the next two releases of ArcGIS Pro, we have uh, capabilities, we could have capabilities such as uh, geoprocessing scheduler, where you can choose when to run your geoprocessing tool rather than run it immediately. You, we also have uh, replication workflows where you can create and synchronize your replications. And you also have scripting metadata where you can pro provide a way to accomplish metadata workflows using Python scripts. In the midterm release, which is uh, within the next two or three releases of ArcGIS Pro, we have capabilities such as animated symbols, which is similar to animated water, but you know, different. Currently, we, currently, the only animated symbology available is, an, is the water one. Uh, we also have uh, capabilities such as GPS support, where you can connect, collect data, and update positions directly from a GPS device. In the long term, where the, these capabilities are planned, planned for, but no timeline has been given, we have capabilities such as terrain editing, where you can edit features participating in a terrain data set. And that's the end of our presentation. We'll now move on to the questions. Okay, so thank you, Ingo and Cheryl. We'll now take questions from the audience. So uh, we have four questions, and uh, we'll be taking question one and two due to time constraint. Uh, the first one is, is Pixel Editor available on all versions of ArcGIS Pro? Okay, um, so for Pixel Editor, it's available on the standard and advanced version of the ArcGIS Pro, but not on the basic. And you will need the Image Analyst extension in order to run the image uh, Pixel Editor. Yep. 
Okay, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, the second question is, will public network model generate different output at different timing? Who would like to take this question? Uh, I'll take this question. Okay. Okay, uh, for that, answer is yes, it will. Um, can we switch to my, yeah. Can switch to my, my, my machine, please? So back to the network data set I created earlier. If we create the analysis again, service area. Use the hospital layers again. change some of these parameters. So let's say we use uh, 10 a.m. first. It will give w a certain coverage. Okay, so it's pretty good coverage at 10 a.m. when most of your public transit is running. However, if you change it to 2 a.m., for example, or let's say 3, and you run it, you have a reduced coverage, like so. Okay. Mm. Um, so yes, the time of the day when you run when when you run this analysis will affect the coverage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ingbo, and thank you everyone for joining us in this session. Um, we'll be taking a couple of minutes before starting the new session.